Hi, welcome to Trapping Inc. I'm Sandy Mellon. And I'm Rich Mellon. On today's show, we're trapping lynx. Lynx, as you know, is one of my favorite animals to chase. And I think it's probably because of that, uh, the difficulty factor. They don't lure well on our trap line. They're not very predictable. You need a system that allows you to go out and get after the cats. And the problem with cats are, is they move a lot. So what I've come up with, we call carpet bombing kitties. <laughs> It's kind of an effective term. <laughs> and, and it's kind of, you know, like uh, the military, the Air Force actually invented carpet bombing. And, and what it was about was they had a, an, an area that they suspected there was something they needed to bomb in there. So they would cover it with bombs, just like laying out a carpet. I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, I've, I've kind of got, area, I've got areas that I know where cats have been or, or I, I believe they're going to be. And so I'm going to cover, cover it with a system to be able to catch them. What we're going to do, because just like when we're carpet bombing, when we're, when we're covering all this area for cats, we need something that is fast and uh, low cost. So what it is is snares. And I've got a bunch of snares here that I've made myself. I'll show you how to make them. Uh, I will credit the fella right now, but Robin Marshall, that showed me how to make these. And I will show you the systems that I use that allows me to carpet bomb for kitties to cover a lot of area high percentage spots uh, we got a lot of stuff stuff to cover in this show so we better get at it you better hurry <laughs> we have a fairly short season and we have a lot of these to lay down so it's all good come on along and we'll see what we're up to okay nice beaver dam over here I've just crossed it I came through the big opening and that this is just a natural place to choose one of those one of those nice thick areas to take and set a, a snare. Um, the thing about about lynx to remember is that they're very erratic. Nothing makes sense. The best explanation I ever heard was just think of them as stoned hippies wandering through the woods. They do whatever they want, wherever they want. But there are some areas where we can be a little bit more high percentage. This is one of them around a the beaver dam, you know, where lines cross is another. You just got to remember that with this system, you are in it for the long run. You're, you're not going to, on average, you're not going to get them overnight. You know, the cats are going to come through every every couple of weeks or whatever, that, that, that sort of thing. You set these up and you get them in place. You get them in place, though, usually by, oh, or first part of January because from then on, the cats start to do start to travel more and that's because they're starting to go into, into their mating season. And then you for sure you want to have these in. This is the time when, you know, they're not going to lure well at all, but they are going to travel and they are going to travel your trails a lot. Trapping is the cornerstone that Canada was built on. Brave and sometimes crazy men and women, fueled by the lucrative fur trade, explored and mapped our great nation. Hundreds of years have passed since then, but trapping still remains vibrant, strong, and steeped in the ancient traditions. The fur bearers still follow the old paths and live as dictated by thousands of years of instinct. Fur only gets prime in the harsh temperatures of winter and trappers must respect and prepare for the weather. Trapping's past is firmly rooted in history, but today, the gear and techniques have changed. Canada is still known for the best wild fur in the world, and today our pelts are sold on the global market. Our community is large, and our numbers are growing. We are trappers. This is what we do and where we belong. Join us in our adventures. Welcome to Trapping Inc., the face of today's trapper. I'm gonna show you what Robin Marshall taught me on how to build these snares that make this carpet bombing, this, this quick Quick react, quick setup, uh, snaring for lynx so so possible. Now we start with for me to get end up with an eight inch loop. I start with thirty inches of um, 
one sixteenth seven by seven. Okay, you have a curve to it. It naturally has a curve. Do not fight the curve. When you take and, and crimp on your uh, cam lock here, make sure that it it locks. Try to open. Okay, in the case of this, you can see here as it goes back, it locks. It doesn't want to go backwards, but it doesn't want to fall this way, right? Okay, and that roughly gives me my eight inch. Um, eight inch loop that I wanted. Yeah, there you go, nice, nice eight inch loop. Okay, that's all pretty basic. We all know how to do that stuff, but here's where it gets neat. We take a 332nd crimp, we take and shove it in, shove our cable in there, and then I take a four foot piece of tie wire, and there's many different weights of tie wire, of course, and it doesn't have to be four feet if you don't want to have. Uh, you know, it all depends on how big of, uh, of, of pole you're going to wrap around, right? I found that if I do four feet, that it gives me lots of lots of uh, of room. Take and run it past both of them in that 332nd. Take and crimp her down. You'll never pull it out of there. You take and uh, set it up on our tree, a couple wraps around. Like so, that's how a pretty skinny tree. I like to do a little bit of this so that my my uh, lock is just over just a hair, but she still goes boom, shoots like nothing, right? If you have this snare set up like this, okay, yeah, it fires really easy, but what happens is that you get a little bit of wind, and there's a situation you end up and she falls over, right? So. Just take and get in the habit of, of throwing a little bit of a, of a bend into her. Give her a little plump like that, just so she sets nice. And there we have. Our eight inch link snare. Absolutely perfect. Can't be any faster, can't be any smoother. This segment brought to you by Argo UTV. Any season, any terrain. Online at ArgoUTV.com. Okay, this is one of the locations. Not only do I have that beaver dam back there, I've got another line that's crossing right here. And I have, you notice how, how, much, how many willows and stuff that I've driven across on my, on my trail here, right? So when I take and set my, uh, my snare pole up in here, it's not going to take a lot of blocking, uh, unnatural blocking to, in order to lead them right there. They're gonna wanna walk there anyway, right? I guess I should do it from here rather than you folks looking at the back side of me, huh? <laughs> Just take and wrap the wire, that hay wire around it twice. Do that, so it's good and firm. Take and pull this up. And set it at the height you want it. Give it a little plump. I want to be Roughly, I like the top of that snare, the top of my knee. Uh, everybody's recipe varies. I'm not saying it's the only way. Now all I gotta do is just throw a tiny bit of blocking in here to make them walk through here. That's it. Usually, I take and use the top of the pole that I've cut off to accomplish that. I like to make sure that my snare is square with my, with the travel. As long as it's square with the way the animal's gonna travel, much better chance of getting caught. If it's not hanging quite right, a pair of pliers 
just use it on that, that crimp that you made on that 332nd to rotate it a bit. And then you can get a perfect, a perfect uh, hang up and down. There we go. The other thing I do is I'll take and throw a piece of uh, ribbon on here at the, on something that's permanent because sometimes when the cat hits that, he'll take and pull it out. He heads right to the thick stuff right away and, and gets hung up, but at least I know that then something's happened. You get a little bit of snow, sometimes it's all covered up, right? That quick, that simple. Carpet bombing kitties. Okay, there are certain spots that are just naturals when it comes to this carpet bombing. Like when I call it carpet bombing, I, I don't mean that I'm totally clueless. I'm looking for, for pinch points and corners and that kind of stuff that uh, is going to concentrate the, where the cats are going to be. Here's a, a case in point. My trail has to zigzag around through this, uh, uh, this clump of tamarack here. So as I come around, it's just natural that any cat coming, like, oh, look at this track right here, would walk right into where my snares are. There we go. This segment brought to you by Argo UTV. Any season, any terrain. Online at ArgoUTV.com. This segment brought to you by Belial Traps. First in the forest. Find us online at BelialTrap.com. Blind snares are just that because you're setting them blind. You're setting them on faith. You're, you're, you're uh, hoping that uh, the animal is, is going to come by. But there are no guarantees. And you just choose your areas that give you the best opportunity is the way to do it. That's what I've done here is I've, I've chosen a spot that I, I thought was, was good. In this case, I have a cut line coming this way and another cut line coming from behind the camera headed this way. And this is where the cat came from. Uh, you know, it's just, just one of those situations where they, they like to travel in the open. They, if you watch their tracks and that, they'll travel along in the open and, and uh, as they come upon a, a, a well-used rabbit trail or that sort of thing that's crossing the, the uh, line, then they might duck off on it, but they might follow for quite a, for quite a ways too. So it's uh, always good to take advantage of the animal's own instincts. And his own instinct is to follow along know on your trail and any time that you can come up with a pinch point where you can take advantage of what he's doing that's an excellent way to go once I go through here see all this is, is, is natural all nice and, all nice and froze down there's only actually a handful of them here that were mine to, to cause this to be a, a funnel, a shoot, right? That's why I like to pick these spots. And that's why with my other system, uh, where I use a drag pole, where I find it so much more convenient because I'm not looking for, oh, I don't need everything in, in one spot. I don't need to have uh, a tree growing right where I got a bunch of thick stuff. I can put the tree there. So we'll show you some as it goes along. Maybe some more with kitties in them. Well, I've got a lot of wolf tracks coming up here to a, a snare. Looks like I have a lynx. Did they eat it? Huh. It looks for the world like they stepped all over it. But I don't see any hair around or anything. This is just a loose pole. Well, it's froze down now. <laughs> but yeah, you can see it's just a simply a loose pole. I'm gonna have to do some work here to get him up. He's kind of froze down. I got him right after, while well, it was still very moist. Didn't take long for this one. One of those places, here's what we're looking at. Side of a little lake. Swamp, 
right on the edge and there is the kitty to prove it this is uh carpet bombing at its finest finest you know not a not a big deal here but this is crazy usually you can't get a coyote or a wolf to come anywhere near steel you know, which is what this is and i don't see where they've hurt anything i think they smelled it you know but it was probably frozen and that probably saved saved everything craziest thing ever man i got lots of work to do here well this list it goes right up there with one of the craziest things i've ever seen Never had a wolf even come near anything like this. Usually if you have anything missing for a trap, it could be a fox. Most, I don't have much with much to do with the canines out here as, as far as uh, them robbing anything. It's usually a cat. Okay, you can see that this is, <laughs> this is all there is to this. Now I'm gonna set it right back up again. This one paid pretty quick dividends. I did this just last weekend. <laughs> well, got a little bit extra on this side. Nice throat catch on him. Hard to tell what he weighs because I got a lot of skeg on him, but he's in beautiful shape. I would think maybe, I would think maybe female, uh, a little smaller. But uh, that is the oddest occurrence I've ever had with, uh, with, with wolves. I, my heart absolutely sunk as I drove up and, and I could see the fact that the, their tracks went right to it, which usually when you get you know, 15 yards from any of my snares or my martin sets or anything, the wolves go out through the bush and around. They don't come anywhere near it. This had walked right up to it. And then I could see the snow was desert, disturbed on the cat, and I thought, oh, I've been so lucky. I haven't lost one yet. I thought I had here, but I didn't. I have to get this set back up, and away we go. This segment brought to you by Belial Traps, first in the forest. Find us online at belialtrap.com. Okay, we all understand that uh, snare wire has a lay to it, has a curl. And when you build your snares, you... You use that to your advantage. When I go to hang this, I, I take and, and check, make sure that I'm hanging it with the way the curve wants to go, because if I do that, I'm causing myself troubles, right? So I take and set her about where I want her. Ooh, look at that one. That one's already ready to go. There can't be anything more humane for a lynx than, than a snare. I mean, he never even pulled this out of the snow, you know? And I mean, there's nothing to pulling it out of the snow. That's how quickly they choke down and how quickly it's all over with. Okay, throw a little blocking in. That's a pretty quick return on my investment, huh? <laughs> and there we go again. Is that your favorite part of the day, Fud? You just can't wait, can ya? Can't wait to see what Dad brought home. Yeah. What on earth is that, huh? Yeah. Eli, not so much. But he is fascinated. <laughs> much attention he's spending with this cat, that's nothing compared to what he does around a fisher. Fisher is just his thing. <laughs> okay, I mean, we, we all know how we skin a lynx. We skin it the same, same way we would skin a coyote, anything else, it's case skinned. One of the things, one, one little tip that I like to do when I am, uh, 
uh, doing these cats so is that they uh, they do need to be put on on the beam and they need to be worked with a knife to get rid of the saddle and, and that and they're kind of fatty and slippery you can see how this stuff is just balling you know and, and it's not not really cleaning up that well right and this is a nice knife I like to use a little bit of sawdust and there's nothing special about this sawdust it's from underneath my table saw and I guess the most important thing is is not only is there some spruce and pine in there but there's also some really ultra fine stuff from uh, cutting up MDF shelving and you can see how quickly this takes and, and uh, sticks to that membrane and how quickly you just peel and clean. For me it works so much better. I use a lot less uh, a lot less motion, a lot less working to clean up a, a cat. And you just keep on going right on down. It also, if you take a look here, you can see how this is almost almost like it's dry now, right? Yeah, that fine dust absorbs a lot of the of the um, uh, oil and that kind of stuff. So just a quick little one to finish off this show is uh, I like to use a little bit of really fine sawdust when I'm when I'm fleshing out my cats, and it, it helps get those those beautiful hides that rattle when you shake them. Long day. Oh, my butt is dragging. I've had enough. What's for supper? <laughs> I don't know. Come on, supper's your favorite part of the whole day. Whatever I invent when we get back to the cabin. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed our, our show on carpet bombing kitties. I hope uh, some of the tips pay off for you. We've uh, had ourselves a heck of a good time doing it, and we'll see you down the trail. Trapping Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Argo UTV. Any season, any terrain. Online at ArgoUTV.com Belial Traps. First in the forest. Find us online at BelialTrap.com And by Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine. Alberta's only hunting, fishing and trapping magazine. You can keep up with all the action online at TrappingInc.com or join our Facebook and YouTube sites.